everybody, Tracy Jo Kalen here with Kalen's Crafting Studio and in today's video I'm going to show everybody how to take an image off of the internet and convert it to an SVG file which um, is a scalable vector file and import it into Design Space. A scalable vector file is a higher quality file that won't lose its quality when you change the size much like a JPEG or a bitmap or a PNG file. Also, if you want to layer your colors and be able to cut them separately, you need to bring them in as an SVG. So all of the files that are within the Cricut uh, Design Space image library are already SVG files. So I know for me personally, I like to find particular files especially if I'm making like a concert t-shirt for myself and I want to have a logo or something on it. Um, obviously you can't sell those because that, there would be copyright infringements there, but I make them for myself just to wear to concerts because um, I love my glitter bling t-shirts. So I like to take logos and things off the internet or sometimes you just have an image that is going to work better than what you can find and you can't quite figure out how to bring it into uh, Cricut Design Space. Um, when you do bring uh, something in other than an SVG, it generally won't layer the colors for you and separate them. It will just make it a print and cut picture and you'll notice and I'll show you how that it only usually gives you that option. So I'm going to show you how to use Inkscape. Inkscape is a free vector based software, design software, that allows you to work with these images outside of design space and then import them in. And it's really pretty simple. It's a very complex uh, software and it does lots of things. You can draw images from scratch. I'm certainly not that talented of a graphic designer and I don't usually do that. I usually find my image and then I work with it within the software. So uh, I'll give everybody the link down below um, which will uh, allow you to go in and download it for yourself. On You will want to do it on a uh, computer, on a personal computer, a PC. Um, I don't believe there's a version, an app for Inkscape. Maybe there is. I don't know. I've only usually done it on my desktop. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to walk everybody through. It's really just a few simple steps and it can be intimidating when you first get Inkscape because it is such a, um, a vast program. But to do what we need to do, it's pretty easy to use and it's free and free is always good. So let's get started. Okay, so again, this software is called Inkscape, and the web address is inkscape.org, and I'll put that web link down below in the information section below this video. And you can just go right here and you can download it, and it is free. Um, I believe it's a pretty large file, so you want to make sure you have ample room on your desktop or your laptop, whatever you're going to use, whichever PC you're going to use, but that's where you get it. So I have Design Space open. I just have a blank canvas started and um, generally when you need to upload an image um, you click on the upload button you click on upload image and then you can either drag and drop or you can browse to where your file is but I'm going to show you what happens here if I upload we're going to use the American flag today so it's just a uh, clip art American flag I found on the internet and you would normally click open you would bring this in. I'm not sure what this file is. I believe it's probably a JPEG file. And I always go right to complex. Now when it's not in an F SVG format you'll get these simple moderate um, and complex uh, selection types. Um, if it's an SVG it generally will just skip all of this and take you right to the end. So I always click on complex because I've just found that sometimes if you click on moderate or anything below you'll get some uh, other issues arise so I usually just go right to complex and I don't seem to have any problems with that so you'll see here it's asking me if I want to erase anything in this particular image I don't sometimes you want to erase your background but when you hit click on continue it generally will only give you an option to save and print or you get this big gray blurb so if I were to save it to cut it's just going to cut a square it's not going to give me any of the layer detail so that's when you run into issues when you don't have your color separated and in an SVG format so I'm going to show you how to do that so I'm going to cancel out of this and we already have Inkscape open so I'm going to go here and so this is what the program looks like when you first open Inkscape so you want to go to file after you've already saved your image that you want to use to your desktop and you want to click on import. 
So I'm going to take this American flag file that I've already saved and I'm going to hit open. Everything here that I get, I just leave it to the default and the none and I click OK. And it brings in my American flag. Now, this little box back here, the canvas box, doesn't really matter. You can enlarge this to, to, to where you can see it a little bit better. But this is what our image is. And this is flattened, or it's, in other words, it doesn't have the layer separated in the color. So you want to click on the image, and then you want to go up to Path. And then you want to click on Trace Bitmap. And what happens is, is you get this little dialog box that opens up and mine's already defaulting because I was working in it earlier and you click on colors and now sometimes if you want to remove the background because you don't want a background in here you would click remove background and that'll give you a transparent background I want the background because the background's going to be white and that would be a square um, white piece of paper or whatever I'm going to cut this on that I would want to include to layer the blue the red and the white on top of it and then you have this scans right here I know that we the American flag is three colors, blue, red, white, and blue, so those are the colors that I'm going to use. So if I go down to two here, you'll see it starts to remove some of the colors, and we don't want to do that. If we go down to one, I don't even think it's going to let us go down to one because it's going to be a minimum of two colors. But if you sometimes it'll start at like eight, and it'll give you a lot of different layering. If you have shadows and things in an image, if the image is extremely... Uh, uh, sort of complex you're gonna get a lot more and you want to make sure that you scale it down to a number of colors that you want to be able to work with so you might have to play with that a little bit to kinda of get what's gonna work for you I picked the American flag because I knew it was easy it was gonna be three solid colors so I'm gonna take it back down to three whoops three and then you just go ahead and you click on you want I just leave colors here I leave this one smooth um, I don't even know what stack scans means, but it's always checked and it seems to work, so I don't change it. And then I hit the OK button. And that'll go away for a second. Now you think that it didn't do anything, but it did actually. So we're actually done with this window, but before I close it, I'm going to show you. So if I take this image and I click on it and I move it, you'll see now that there's two images here. The one behind was your original image. We don't need that anymore. So you can click on it and then hit your delete key on your keyboard and get rid of it and we're going to just move this one back over. So this is the one that it traced the bitmap and it has separated the colors. So now you want to go up here to um, Object and you want to click on Ungroup and then click off of it and then you'll see it has now separated the colors into three different pieces. So here's the white background, the blue, and the red. Um, we don't need this box anymore so you can just X out of it and it goes away. Um, now if I save this it's going to save it kind of separated. I'm not really worried about it because it, once it's in design space I can make it align uh, all up again. But So there it's now in the red, white, and blue, the three different layers. So you, that we want to save it to our desktop. So you want to go back to File and then you want to click Save As. Now it will give you an Inkscape SVG option. I changed that to say Plain SVG. I go ahead, we'll just leave that name on there, I'm putting it on my desktop, and I click on save. And that's it, we're done with this particular software. So now I can go back in here into design space, I can click on upload. This was one I had already done earlier, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that one out of here so we don't confuse it. So that one's gone. Now I'm going to go to upload image, I'm going to click on browse and I'm going to browse to where that file is. Now it's not this one because that's showing me that I just know that that was my original JPEG. It's this one here. For my computer it doesn't show um, what it looks like because I don't have um, I guess a software saved to where it shows it but um, I know that this is my SVG file so you just want to make sure you know where you saved it and you click on open. Now when I open it, it skips the whole simple, moderate, and complex thing and takes us right to naming it. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that name. You can tag it if you want. I'm not going to save this, so I'm not going to really worry about it right now. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Save. Now I have this image in here, so I'm going to click on it. And as you can see it down here, to be inserted, I'm going to say Insert Image. Now, why that's loading, you can already see that I've got three different layers of colors here. 
Um, I'm going to bring this down a little bit so we can see it. Uh, I'll probably just make the whole thing why it's still grouped a little bit smaller so it's a little bit easier to work with here because it brought it in a pretty large file. Um, they weren't exactly lined up. Um, actually, let's bring it down just a little bit more so I can move it over here. You can see they weren't exactly lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup those layers so it separated out the white the red and the blue so you can see they're all separate layers here now and behind here it's transparent so you would want to lay that on top of something white to get the white effect in the back also the um, the inside the stars is also transparent which is perfect because when you lay it on a piece of white it, the white will show through now I want to line all these up just for the sake of lining them up to see what they look like on the screen so I'm going to select them all by clicking on and dragging down on my mouse and I'm going to hit align and then I'm just going to hit center and that's going to bring whoops actually we don't want to center the middle this one here so I'll just kind of eyeball that one just to kind of see what it looks like but there we go we have our American flag so when you click make it you can see now you've got your separate three colors of paper that you can then send to your mat which I don't need to cut it so I'm not going to do that but it's pretty simple it's um not nearly as intimidating. Now again, sometimes you bring in very intense logos and things that have more than just very simple sharp colors. So you're really going to have to play with those scan colors that I showed you within the software itself. Um, but you know, if you play with it enough, you can kind of generally get to where you want to go or just, you know, try to pick images that you know are just going to be a few solid colors. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If anybody has any questions, see, please leave them below. Um, I appreciate you watching my video. If you liked it, a thumbs up would be fantastic. And don't forget to subscribe to my page. I really appreciate it. And I hope everybody has a great day and uh, keep on crafting. Take care.